You lose my keys, you fill a history. Hey, you, you shoot me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. That's right. Greetings, my excellent friends. I am your most excellent host, Joe. And I'm your most excellent host, Chris. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the film school. Uh, tonight we're going to do a nice review of the third Bill and Ted movie, Bill and Ted Face the Music. And trailer. 25 years ago, you played a concert in front of the entire world. One month ago, you played in Barso, California for 40 people, most of whom were there for $2 taco night. Bill and Ted, what have you got to say for yourselves? Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. You were supposed to unite the world and save reality as we know it. Bill, we've spent our whole life trying to write the song that will unite the world. Why can't we just go to the future when we have written it? Whoa! And take it from ourselves! But isn't that stealing? How is that stealing if we're stealing it from ourselves, dude? <laughs> Yeah, so I says to Mabel, Mabel, I says, wrecked him. <laughs> Damn near killed him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, welcome back. No, awesome. Yeah, uh, Bill and Ted face the music, man. I, I can't believe they've done a, a third Bill and Ted movie after all these years. And Cheers. Cheers. It's good to be back, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's just start off real quick by addressing the elephant in the room. It's been a crazy year. What with uh, pandemics, and, as you all know, and protests and earthquakes and fires and all the craziness that's been happening in the world. Cats and dogs living together. Mass, Mass hysteria. <laughs> so right now I'm going to just call it like it is. I think this movie is more timely than ever. Like we need a film like this right now because this is just a, a, a good like distraction from all the garbage that's going on. And it's got a really nice positive message, you know. Of uh, of love and unity and music and right. and it's it's really good. So yeah, just to, just for those who are not initiated, for the uninitiated, I have here the uh, Shout Factory, uh, Bill and Ted's most excellent collection. You have this as well. Yes, beautiful cover art by Paul Shipper. So this is a long-awaited sequel that I don't think any of us ever expected to ever actually happen. You know, Keanu Reeves got so big with his Matrix movies and his John right. Wick movies, I never thought he would ever... Well, whatever happened to Alex Winter? I mean, he kind of... After Freaked, I have no idea. Kind of disappeared after that. Yeah. yeah. Not sure. Maybe he was doing some TV. I haven't really kept up with his career. I remember he had a show on MTV in the early early 90s about the time Bogus Journey came out called The Idiot Box. Yeah, I remember really that. funny. <laughs> I still have some recorded on VHS from back in the day. But yeah, uh, picking up, they're saying 25 years later, but it's more like 29 years later from the second movie. Because uh, you had Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in 89, and you had Bogus Journey in 91. And now it's uh, basically 25 years later, and Bill and Ted are older. They have kids. They, they're married to the they're princesses. Married to the princesses, yeah. And they still haven't written the song that's supposed to save the world. And now it's not just supposed to save or unite the world. It's supposed to save the universe. Yeah, the entire universe. <laughs> but, uh, go right ahead. Alex Winter's, uh, yeah, Bill's daughter is played by Samara Weaving. If you guys don't know, she wasn't ready or not. And, uh, She's the niece of Hugo Weaving. Is she really? Yeah. She kind of has the uh, same DNA as uh, Margot Robbie. They could, yeah, they could be sisters. They could definitely be sisters for Aren't sure. they both Australian? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Maybe they are related. Maybe she's. A, maybe they're distant cousins from the Outback and the gasoline. And the gasoline. Yeah. One day, Australia probably will be Mad Max with the way things keep going. But that's a different story. 
I'm just saying with the environment and everything globally, we're going to be more like a escape from New York here. So I don't know which is better. Right? <laughs> escape from LA as well. But uh, good distraction. Keep your mind off boring stuff like the 2020 election and, you know, the current economical disaster that's happening. It's good to have a film that comes out that's that actually kind of takes you away from all that, you know? Right. And it's it's directed by uh, Dean. I don't know. Dean Parasad is I think is I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah. But he did Galaxy Quest. I love Galaxy Quest and Red Two, which is good. Not as good as the first Red, but good. And then um, who shot this? Shelly Johnson. Yeah. So he worked with Joe Johnson a lot. Like he shot Joe Johnston, right? Yeah. He yeah. shot because um, no relation. Captain America, First Avenger. Um, the Wolfman and Jurassic Park 3. Did he not do October Sky? No. Okay. Uh, I still haven't, to this day, I still haven't seen, I hated Lost World Jurassic Park so badly, I've never seen the third Jurassic Park. All right. I figure it's probably better. I mean, I love Spielberg, but I felt like he phoned the second one in. But, uh, I, I mean, it's better than the Jurassic World movies, I'll tell you that much. But, <laughs> but I digress. Back to this movie. You know, um, so we're, we're, I mean, I can't, I don't know if you can tell we're kind of doing a spoiler light review here because, uh, we don't want to, uh, really, uh, you should do, we, we actually did the video on demand, the streaming, um, could have seen it at the drive-in, um, and some local theaters have opened up, um, drive-in would have been cool. It would have just been complicated to get everyone there. And so it was just easier to just do it at my house by streaming it. Right. And, um. It's, so it was kind of nice to have that opportunity to see a movie I would normally race to the theater to see. And I do miss going to the theater. That's something that's hit me hard uh, about this year uh, uh, with what's been going on is I can't go to church, you know, <laughs> church of cinema. Right. Um, I mean, I have. I've been once in the last four months. I went and saw a showing of Hook and it was like me and a buddy. And then there were two other people in the theater. So it was kind of nice. But at the same time. I just, I'm not ready to go back yet. Just want to wait it out a little bit, you know. Shh. So we got a chance to see this, uh, and I have kind of uh, watched it twice now just because I really like how it incorporates a lot of elements um, from the first two films. So in a, in a way, it's a little derivative of that, but they, they managed to um, combine the elements from the first two films in a way that's most satisfactory. Yeah, my, my favorite part of those when they all go to hell like that's just <laughs> you know and of course death death is played by William Sadler again and yeah. it's 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 great who knew that guy could be so funny you know right because he normally doesn't get a chance to like play those that kind of role so it was nice to see him back yeah I'm so you know I'm glad he was you know he was willing to come back so. yeah because it's been you know like you said 29 years or whatever well, I love the fact that, like the original film, so because the second film, there's not a lot of time travel per se. I mean, there's the future and there's a little bit of time travel, but it's mostly in hell, you know. And then, uh, and so there really aren't a whole lot of historical figures or historical celebrities like in the first movie. And they managed to combine kind of that feel of the first movie by getting historical celebrities, but they're all musicians, right? And so, I mean, you got really good. Uh, um, musicians throughout time with Jimi Hendrix and Louis Armstrong and uh, Amadeus, and which I thought was it was just really clever. It was a feel it was a feel good movie. It's a feel good comedy. It's is it high art? No, but it's it's a good popcorn movie and a good it's good to see uh, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter playing these characters again because I just have so much love for Bill and Ted. Um, I even I even used to watch the animated series on Fox back in the early 90s, and I think I caught one episode of that really crappy Fox live action show. Yeah, I, I had no idea. Canceled after did. six episodes. God, it's terrible. We were, right? Yeah, when we were watching that YouTube thing about it, I couldn't believe how bad that was. Oof. No wonder why it lasted six episodes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I felt the same way about the Weird Science TV series on USA, but. It, that lasted like four seasons so what do i know but i never watched it so yeah no good but i mean it's good to see these guys back um it's it's kind of i mean it's definitely modernized um you know it, there's definitely 
modern themes of like feminism and unity and kind of what's going on a little bit in the world kind of mixed in there, but not in a way that's overbearing that, uh, that overtakes the humor and the general charm. Cause that's what they did. They managed to recapture the charm of the first two movies after all these years. And it's because the writers, Ed Solomon and who's the other gentleman, Ed Solomon and Chris Matheson uh, had been holding out on writing these, this uh, film for a long time because they didn't want to just do a, a third film just to make some money. They genuinely care about these characters. I think they're loosely based on people they know. So uh, they really took their time, a lot of time, and really kind of finding the right angle and the right way to go with this film. And it was nice to see like Beck Bennett playing Deacon, grown up, and he's a police officer like his dad. And the fact that they got Ted's dad back and Missy's back and all these, uh, you know, death and, and even a reference to station in Bogus Journey, which is uh, just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. I'd I give it three stars easily. Yep. Three out of four stars. Three out of four for sure. And there's, I, I mean, I feel like it's the end of Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter's time. It, is a tr- it could be the final, like the final one, but you never know. It's still kind of open with the kids and everything. Right. By possibly spinning that off. But uh, and they had a nice angle. I like the angle, too, where it's kind of like, do Bill and Ted really do the song? Or is it their kids who have, you know, helping him out? But that's kind of everyone. Everyone's kind of involved. Everyone in the whole world throughout time. It's really great. Um, yeah. And I think at a, at a time like this, I think a f- th- this film has just yes, a positive all, message. We all need this film. Yeah. You should definitely check it out. Absolutely. It'll put a big smile on your face. Especially when it's been such a rough year. We've lost so many great people this year. We Unfortunately, we lost Chadwick Boseman, uh, Black Panther, um, 42, the Jackie Robinson story, Get On Up. It's so sad because we're, he's like our age and had no idea, obviously. I don't think anyone really knew except people he was close to that he was fighting cancer. And it's just sad to lose such a immense talent who was a cornerstone of... of Marvel's next phase. Um, We also lost the great John Saxon. We lost Wilford Brimley. Um, We lost Carl Reiner. That's sad. And we lost uh, the legendary Ennio Morricone, which is just heartbreaking. Amazing film composer. Won an Oscar for The Hateful Eight, the one and only film that Quentin Tarantino's ever had scored. Um, You know, he'd done The Untouchables for Brian De Palma and the mission and of course all of Sergio Leone's films right. so I mean just legendary and I love the guys did, of course he did John Carpenter's The Thing so. yeah and Danger Diabolic and uh, um, Obsession no that was Bernard Herman. my 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 bad on that no but, he worked a lot with um, uh, Lucio, oh. Lu, Lucio Fulci yeah well he did Death Rides a Horse uh you know, so he's just been he's been working in the industry, I think, since the fifties and just an amazing talent. So this year has been kind of a of a bummer. So we definitely need a movie like this that just has like really positive message and, and affirmation. And I hope that when you guys watch it, it makes you feel as good as I did watching it, because I kind of got that nostalgia, felt like a kid again, like I'm t- thirteen years old watching the movie again and the original and just having a good time. So, yeah, definitely three stars. Having definitely we're, having a good time. We're just two guys and we're having a good time. Having a good time. Having a good time. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> uh, cut. Uh, no, that's probably going to come off as uh, homophobic. So, sorry. Um, yeah, no, uh, again, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And if you're like me and you're not ready to go to the theater yet, just stream it. It's worth the money. Just buy it. Don't rent it. It's only $5 difference. Just do yourself a favor and add it to your collection. And I'm definitely going to be picking it up when it comes out on physical media. What about yourself? Oh, yeah. I'll be picking it up. It'd be nice if it just, for consistency's sake, got a shout release. You know? Yeah, that would be nice. But it probably won't. Oh, and that reminds me. The Orion logo at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Nice to see that again. Always reminds me of RoboCop. Yeah. Which I pointed out when right. we were watching it. <laughs> Actually, and then I failed to, to I failed to mention that it also reminds me of Beach Street, because that's the first film I ever saw the Orion logo. As soon as the 
starts spinning and glows into the O. It's when you hear the Beat Street break breakdown by Grandmaster Flash kick on, and I love Beat Street. 1984, Ghostbusters and Beat Street. Those were my movies. So I'm old, very old. So on that note, um, yeah, let us know if you got a chance to watch it over the weekend or, or over opening weekend, and uh, let us know if you liked it and uh, if there's anything you want to talk about. Yeah. Try and keep the spoilers to a minimum, but uh, yeah, on that note. It's really good to be back, guys. We're going to have please, some more reviews coming up. Please help us out. Let's let's get the like and subscribe. Let's get it up. Yep. Let's do this. Now so you're doing a giveaway. Well, once we get to 200 subscribers, we are going to do a giveaway, it sir. Is. We're going to do an Arrow video giveaway, just like our previous Criterion, where Chris and I will hand select a film from the Arrow collection on uh, Blu-ray and uh, or DVD, if that's your preference. Well, we're just going to pick the movie and then you'll have to deal with that, I guess. <laughs> so on that note, uh, we're just going to impart some words of wisdom from our, our protagonists here, Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan. And it's very timely, man. Be excellent to each other. And... <laughs> I can't remember <laughs>